All right, number four, we have yet another inequality. This one involves a, a quadratic term and an absolute value. So we're going to have to go through and reduce this to cases. So we remember the definition of absolute value. The absolute value of something is the opposite of that thing. If that thing is negative, it's the thing itself. If that thing is bigger than or equal to zero. So the absolute value of x minus 3 is either the opposite of the quantity x minus 3, if the quantity x minus 3 is less than 0, or it's just plain old x minus 3, if x minus 3 is bigger than or equal to 0. So you simplify that, x minus 3 equals uh, negative x plus 3 if I add 3 to both sides here, x is less than 3, or it's just x minus 3 if x is bigger than or equal to 3. And so we're going to have two cases for this inequality. Case 1, x is less than 3. So if x is less than 3, the absolute value of x minus 3 is equal to this. So my inequality can be rewritten as x squared minus 6 is less than or equal to x plus the quantity negative x plus 3. So I simplify that and I get that. Quadratic inequality, get everything on one side, 0 on the other. I'm going to call the non-zero side my function f of x, and I'm looking where my f of x is less than or equal to zero. So the first thing I do is I solve f of x equal to zero to find the zeros of the function. So that's x squared minus 9 is zero. You can factor this or you can extract square roots. No matter how you slice it, you're going to get x equals plus or minus 3. So we're going to go put those things on the number line. Here's negative 3 and 3. And we're going to test the function around it. At negative 3 and 3, they're equal to 0. And I'm going to test to see what the function's doing around there. So I'll check, say, negative 4. 0 and 4. So my function is f of x equals x squared minus 9. If I look at f of negative 4, negative 4 squared is 16. 16 minus 9 is a positive number. If I look at f at 0, 0 squared minus 9, that's a negative number. And if I plug in 4, 4 squared minus 9, that's a positive number. So looking back at my original inequality, I wanted the f of x to be less than or equal to 0. So I'm looking for the zeros as well as any negatives. And so the answer I'm getting is negative 3 to 3 inclusive. However, I have to remember the case I'm in. I'm in the case where x is strictly less than 3. So on the number line, this is the only portion of the number line I'm considering at this time. My answer is negative 3 to 3 inclusive. So I'm going to have a filled in dot at negative 3 all the way over. And I can't fill in the dot at 3 here, even though this says 2, because technically speaking, that's not part of the uh, x-axis I'm dealing with. So at this stage in the game, my solution for case 1 is everything from negative 3 up to, but not including, 3. All right, now it's time for case 2. Case 2, x is greater than or equal to 3.
So in this case, my inequality can be rewritten as x squared minus 6 is less than or equal to x plus, and for x greater than or equal to 3, the absolute value of x minus 3 is just x minus 3. Here I get x squared minus 6 is less than or equal to 2x minus 3. Get everything on one side, 0 on the other. I subtract off the 2x and I add the 3. I get this inequality. I'm going to call this f of x. And so I need to go find the zeros of f. So x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. That factors nicely for us. And I get x equals negative 1, 3. So I take those and put them on my number line. These are where the functions actually equal to 0. And I'm going to check around it. Say at negative 2, 0, and 4. So my f of x is x squared minus 2x minus 3. If I substitute in negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. Minus 3 gives me a positive number. If I plug in 0, f of 0 is a negative number. I plug in 4, f of 4 is 16 minus 8 minus 3. That's also a positive number. So I go back to my original inequality. I'm looking for f of x less than or equal to 0. So I'm looking for 0 or uh, negative. So it looks right there. And so for my answer, Looks like I'm getting everything from negative 1 to 3 inclusive. Now I go back, though, and look at the case I'm in. I'm in the case x is greater than or equal to 3. So this is the only part of the real number line I'm looking at right now. So if I look at my solution, my solution is negative 1 up to 3, that would start over here, somewhere off screen, and come up and fill in the dot there. So, the only part of the real number line that satisfies the equation for case 2 is just the number 3 itself. Alright, so from case 1... I had everything from negative 3 up to, but not including, 3. And for case 2, I had just 3 itself. So if I put these two things together for my final answer, I glue these two number lines together at 3. What am I going to get? Everything from negative 3 up to and not including the 3 from here. But then this gives me the 3 as well. So my final answer is negative 3 to 3 inclusive. That'll do it for number four.